Okay, so we're going to cover what to kind of expect this quarter. And it, I'm going to cover all kinds of business sectors. I'm going to cover retail, what might you expect if you're in the hospitality, tourism sector, restaurant sector, professional service, organizations, all of the different sectors, because we all expect maybe some similar things, but some things may be different. And then um, strategies for kind of preparing for it. And um, then I might just open up the floor and ask you how you're preparing for 2022, if we've even thought about it, right? <laughs> so many of us are in the business of running our business and these things kind of uh, just sneak up on us. So I have prepared a checklist, which you'll receive if you're watching online, you'll receive it with a copy of the PowerPoint slides, you receive that and you should have gotten one when you signed in. Yeah, so that'll be just a tool for you to take back and kind of think about how you're getting prepared for the fourth quarter. All right, let's start with retailers. Um, earlier this morning, we had a fabulous uh, workshop and webinar on the future of retail. And we went, uh, dug deep into trends and kind of how retailers are working towards, you know, kind of knowing what the future lies. And so I'm just going to start with retailers today and kind of what businesses might expect in quarter four of 2022. Um, still concerns with the supply chain. It's still real. Um, national shortage of truck drivers, a lack of availability in warehouse space, rising consumer demand, these are the three challenges that really continue to impact retail operations throughout 2022. Um, I'm amazed. I walked through yesterday through um, downtown San Luis Obispo, SLO, because I was, um, or slow as you call it. And I was uh, up at the hotel, so it was easy for me to walk down here. And I walked into quite a few of the retailers that are located here that are not chains. And their inventory looked strong, looked really strong. Now, retailers you typically really buy heavy for the last quarter. So their stores are full of inventory and merchandise because the fourth quarter for retailers is typically the biggest quarter. Um, it's when their people are gift buying and the holidays at change of weather for apparel. So it is often one of the larger quarters for them. So they usually are pretty heavy with inventory and their goal is to sell it. Um, shoppers will uh, potentially be shopping in store, online and across all channels um, and marketplaces as they hunt for these special perfect gifts for everyone. So online um, shopping of course is gonna continue to grow through the last quarter and it's not going away, it's here to stay. So e-commerce continues to share the retail market with the high, uh, with remains high. And um, so does the level of the competition in that space. It's a statistic that I pulled down from the National uh, Retail Federation says 57% of shoppers still plan to do their shopping online this quarter, this last quarter, with a, um, only about 43% heading in the shop or heading into the physical bricks and mortar store. So if you're a retailer and you want a little bit of that 57% of the market share, work on getting your uh, online site up or fine tuning it and just make sure that you know, you're prepared for that. Um, the National uh, Retail F uh, Federation found that sales increased about 14% over the year from 20 to 21, and it generated about $886 billion online. Ugh, that's a lot of money. Um, digital marketing will outpace traditional marketing, but as I mentioned in my earlier workshop today, I am still a big believer in traditional, whether that's print or radio or cable or publications, it still has value 
that online uh, digital marketing is going to outpace. And that's just because that's the way a lot of us are consuming information, whether it's our iPad, our mobile device, our computers. Um, we're still, uh, you know, uh, looking at different social media uh, platforms as well as email marketing. So that will continue to outpace traditional. People are expected to celebrate quote unquote normally this year. Uh, a survey by numerator found that 85% of people expect to celebrate normally by Thanksgiving and about 22% by December. So we're hopeful that they'll be celebrating and maybe attending some of the events that are coming back on, some of the promotions that retailers will be holding. Um, and uh, that, that will be a little bit of more of a normal fourth quarter. Local events are slowly returning. I did a hunt, when I put my webinars and my PowerPoints together, I always look for examples in the community to showcase. And for example, this is the center studio and um, they have their hours up there. And I also look for what type of events are gonna be held during the holidays. And a lot of organizations wait till the last minute to figure out what they're going to be doing, but they are, are going to be uh, returning. Um, Hassle-free customer experience is expected. Um, that means creating a shopping experience that entices your, um, your customers and offers a smooth path to purchase and post-purchase giving them a strong reason to choose your store over the competition. So we, you know, thinking about making it easy and quick to shop, however, if they, if they choose today. So uh, new retailers are emerging in the marketplace. We're gonna continue to see that. We're gonna see a um, quarter four, we'll have the new entrepreneurs opening up or participating as a pop-up at an event or even as a pop-up in, inside of a, an existing retail. And then yes, health and safety protocols are still relevant. So that for retailers is kind of what we're thinking they should expect this last quarter. Probably nothing um, surprising there at all, um, but you know, just always nice refresher to like think about it. So food and beverage sector, uh, this is kind of, I, I trying to think besides the norm that, you know, you've got to have a good menu, maybe private events and things. I kind of did some research on what are some of the things, uh, trends that might be growing in food and beverage that probably are going to continue and be strong in quarter four. So obviously continuing to offer takeout, curbside delivery or third-party delivery is gonna continue. And it probably is a much as the new norm. For lunch, I went down to the little restaurant, The Seeds, or Seeds. And I was sitting there waiting for my to-go order and I loved the back wall. They had like, uh, like shelves and one was for DoorDash, one was for online order, one was for um, and didn't take out, it just had three little bags that, you know, had was kind of advertising, this is their takeout corner. So I thought that was pretty spiffy because their little space is pretty big for sitting and they had a lot of outdoor space, but that looked, you know, obviously part of their business model. So continuing that ease of delivery for your uh, food and beverage. Uh, healthier and more plant-based options continue to be in demand. Um, so I think it's growing, it's expanding beyond just burger replacement. They said the double to triple digit growth in these categories includes snacks, dips, cheeses, breads, and they're really driving increased uh, plant-based sales. And I think we're seeing that more and more across most menus, especially when they service a, an area with uh, certain demographics too like college towns. <laughs> um, invest in um, interest in catering, hosting larger parties and or vending at in-person events is returning for our food and beverage. 
Uh, they're uh, going to be more demand for catering. They're going to be businesses are having their staff come back in and maybe holding an event. Um, family events are coming back. So there's going to be that, uh, that demand for that in 2022, quarter four. Uh, customers are wanting more transparency in the origin of what they are consuming. Um, COVID-19 had really has really accelerated this trend of consumers wanting to know where their food's coming from and the supply chain history of the products they purchase and consume. And interest in um, focus on sustainability is still taking center stage. And then, of course, continued health and food safety protocols. And when I do sustainability, California is way ahead of the environmental friendly practices with the type of to-go carts and um, drink reusable cups and drinks and things like that. So that's going to continue to go, grow. Uh, this is uh, Bear in the Wind uh, uh, restaurant, and they... Um, have their story there, their menu is easy to see, they have their social media uh, icons are all working. Um, so it's easy to find out, find them on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, they, sh they show that I think they're on Google uh, My Business. So again, really looking at the fourth quarter for food and beverage is going to be a time where there's going to be family visiting. So we want to make sure that you're prepared so you can handle that, more parties, more catering, um, and uh, hopefully more revenue. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next sector. And hospitality and tourism sector. This is one that has been really hit hard by uh, the pandemic and is um, slowly recovering. Uh, things have changed quite a bit in this sector with some of the ways that uh, hotels are trying to rebound from staff shortages, as well as the health and safety protocols um, that are still relevant. But I actually have an office in Phoenix and we are seeing a huge return of international and, and nationwide travel, um, as well as in our more rural areas, a lot of stay vacations. That's probably one of the benefits for the hospitality and tourism sector was that a lot of our local population stayed close to home or close and, and visited our outdoor places like in uh, some of our uh, rural areas that have the national parks or the state parks they're rebounding quite strong and so are hospitality and tourism sector. For our area, for that state, you know, winter is one of our busiest months. And if we don't have another like issue with uh, the baseball teams last year that, that pretty much eliminated spring training, we should have a really good uh, first quarter of 2023. But uh, the tourism, hospitality and, and tourism sector is still uh, going to be seeing a lot of return of visitors. Uh, be pleasure or be, be leisure travelers and hotel workspaces is probably still going to be in demand. And as a consultant, I travel a lot or I use, I'm coming back to traveling a lot. And so the hotels that I kind of seek out have that uh, high broadband Wi-Fi, provide a nice desk with all the plugins. And so we're continuing to see that still being uh, needed and it'll be expected in, in quarter 2022. Digitalized gift, guest experiences is the new norm. Um, I'm surprised that some of our hotels still hand out keys, but a lot of the more uh, national uh, chains um, and their their downline uh, hotels are all now have the digital entrance. You just, you know, swipe it. Um, digital, vir virtual reality and digital marketing for our uh, hospitality and tourism sector is going to be key. Uh, we're seeing more of the uh, people interested in knowing and wanting to visit and what do the rooms look like and what are the amenities 
and this has always been the norm for the hospitality and tourism sector, but I think as people are returning more to visit family and friends or just travel and take those exotic vacations um, out of the country, um, out of their state, they're going to want to see, you know, what's open, what, what is available, and we're seeing more and more hotels doing the virtual 360 degree type of, um, of visuals for uh, people visiting their websites. Staffing power continues to be an issue. Uh, traveling, I'm, and I think these are what you should expect. Uh, businesses are gonna expect that this is gonna continue on into quarter four, that, you know, cleaning rooms. I was just in over in Durango and our room was cleaned like every three days. Um, they'd give us fresh towels if we wanted it, but they just didn't have the staffing power. So that's across all sectors, right? <laughs> it's a tough one. And, uh, and health and safety guidelines. And this is where I stayed. I put it up there. Um, again, before I ever travel, before I do my webinars, anything that I know about a community, if I don't have any, I haven't been here and I don't have some past photos, is I pull everything down virtually. So it, whether it's on a website, I go to a Facebook page, I go to Chamber of Commerces and look in their directories to find the certain sector that I want. Um, and so that's my that's my view into a community when I'm putting together PowerPoints and want to showcase some of their, their uh, venues. So this is like the, the front page of Peachtree Inn. And it, it, it looks like that. It's, it's really a nice facility. Now, I actually found it on Expedia. So they use all of the different uh, type of booking um, platforms, but it was seamless for me. They were great. They let me park my car there yesterday while I walked downtown, no, no problem. This morning it was painless. They had a nice breakfast. Um, yeah, so, you know, it's family owned and operated since 1986. They talk a little bit about that they're a proud Cal Poly alumni. And so when I looked at that, it really pulled me in because it was like, okay, this is not just you know, the Quality Inn or Marriott or something. This was something a little bit more homegrown. So that front, ent you know, the front portal for all of the sectors typically is on your website is typically the window to your business. It's your storefront. It's your office building. It's your, it's your hotel. Because so many of us are viewing our world through that now because that's what we have. And we're seeking it out and it's really convenient to sit in our home or at our office and just you know start to search so this was uh that's going to be a continued uh expectation for quarter 20 quarter four continuing into 23 and probably forever right okay so health and wellness sector this would be like your spas, your hair salons, your health clubs, Pilates studios, yoga studios, all of that sector. And um, slowly in-person um, sessions are returning and they're returning strong. So that's gonna continue. Of course, um, quarter four is not always their peak. Well, for salons, it might be. Um, their peak quarter, but definitely quarter one for is usually for health clubs and exercise studios, Pilates studios is really strong because it comes after the holidays. Everybody's making their New Year's resolutions, right? Their goal. So in-person sessions are returning. Um, virtual coaching and online classes is still an option. A lot of uh, people that I know that are going to their yoga studios are also then supplementing it with uh, virtual. They're, they're been, their behavior is different now. They're continuing to uh, find out that that's easy. They have all their equipment at home. Maybe they have a space. So they're doing both. They're wanting the in-person with the actual teacher, and then they're doing the virtual at home as a supplement. Um, consumers are continuing to purchase um, value added products. And we're seeing that over and over in spas, hair salons, yoga studios, uh, most uh, 
places are really uh, trying to drive additional revenue, not just from the service part of their business, but really from the products and um, that help augment that service. So that is gonna continue. And for the health and wellness sector, they should really be looking at packaging some of the um, products as a package along with a certificate to join, to participate in their uh, studio with you know a month of free classes or a month of classes that they per that people purchase as a gift giving idea. Um, and I always used to like to get uh, you know something from. Um, there's a little company in Visalia my sister orders from. She only does pop-up events and she does box subscriptions. It's called Bliss. And it's all of these products that she makes and has under her, well, she has them made and they're under her, her name. And they're the best products. And so my sister always showcases the subscription box she gets with all these great products. And so one year she gave, gave me my, she had my name. So I got a box for Christmas from her. And it was really fun and exciting. Uh, selling online includes service packages. Personalized treatment and services will continue to be in demand um, in the fourth quarter, as well as 2023 first quarter. Uh, we hope that there'll be a bump up. Businesses should expect to bump up in gift cards, especially if you have uh, digital ones for the health and wellness bundling of services. I kind of talked about that. And of course, healthy health and safety protocols are still relevant. I think one of the things that uh, this sector should also be aware of in the last quarter and probably throughout most of next year is that uh, people are very concerned um, not only with their physical health, um, as we, but also their mental health. So we're seeing a lot more of that, those products maybe helping the mental health, the, uh, the added value of meditation, um, so, you know, mental health is still uh, something that is in the current climate. So, okay. Oops, there we go. Professional. What sector are you in? Um, oh, okay. I'm, so probably professional is your sector. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's kind of where I love my type of business too, because being a consultant. Yeah. So remote work and hybrid work environments are still, we're gonna see that continue um, and probably permanent for many. This is the perfect example of being a kind of a hybrid. Um, more, more often we're seeing, um, I know I was talking to my girlfriend that works for a large uh, law firm in Phoenix, and she says that they are allowing like two days to work remotely, but it's all by each department. So um, I'm not sure about your uh, real estate office if they allow you to work. We've You've always been kind of remote anyways. Same for me, the pandemic, well, it wasn't as scary as maybe a business that depends on foot traffic, although we were impacted by well, I was impacted by, you know, not traveling to my clients and my contracts that I had, but we've always been used to being like out on meeting with the client at the house or, you know, me meeting the client. Uh, In-person networking events are returning, which I think is really uh, valuable for professional sector. Although LinkedIn is good, it's not the same as exchanging cards. <laughs> or just you know, networking with your fellow uh, colleagues or getting up exposure from a business expo, a professional business expo, or attending a conference where you're, you can network in, uh, with other folks. So that's kind of exciting that those events are coming back and we're gonna see that. I would expect we'd see a few more of those by the end of the quarter in the professional sector. Sponsorship opportunities are being offered for both in-person events as well as hybrid options. So again, that is something that many professional businesses want to sponsor. Um, something they you know want that marketing that goes with that. So we're going to see some that continue through this quarter. LinkedIn app 
activity is still the social media platform of choice by professionals? Do you have a strong LinkedIn? Medium. <laughs> it's fine. I have one too, and I, I try to keep it up to date. Most time I'm using it at, to demonstrate when I do a live webinar. But um, it, yeah, for most professionals, a strong LinkedIn professional site is, is needed. Yeah, you'll get there. <laughs> I don't know. My picture, I, yeah, my photo on there, I was thinking, oh, I should probably update that. that I, don't, I don't have that color hair anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but it has been valuable to reconnect with colleagues because there's been a lot of shifting and I and I think that you know um, you should for quarter four for professionals maybe concentrating on you know going in there and staying a little active and see what folks are doing um Staffing power, again, even for professional-based uh, businesses, continues to be an, uh, an issue. And this was um, Clever Ducks. And I just really kind of liked uh, their website. And just kind of, again, they have a drop-down for email marketing, which is really key. Um, they, uh, and, you know, it's, uh, it kind of say, like, oh, what, they're an IT business with the bicycle there. So I just thought it was really uh, very, um, very appealing who we are, what we do, their blog, career, simple site, but really nicely uh, uh, done images with their logo and a drop down for their email marketing strategy. Okay, service-based businesses. Um, for some service-based businesses, the fourth quarter can be their quarter. For example, my daughter has a roofing business in up in Northern California, and the winter months is not their season, right? But she also has a cleaning business, a commercial cleaning business, and quarter four is a pretty good business uh, quarter for them. There's a lot of move-ins, move-outs. There's a lot of uh, commercial cleaning because she has several uh, Airbnb and uh, small boutique hotel contracts. So they're moving, you know, people are coming and staying. Uh, continued communication about health and safety protocols is a must, especially if those businesses are traveling and coming into um, people's homes, whether that's a plumber, electrician, a carpet layer, carpet cleaning, even the health. Uh, even the cleaning business itself, what are those uh, safety, health and safety protocols? And I think for the, those type of businesses, not only, uh, you know, the type of protocols they use to say health and safety, but also their cleaning products or the products they're using is important too. I think for quarter four, increased in digital marketing, including their website, social and e-marketing is a must. Um, quarter four is a time for the service-based businesses and even professional basis businesses to kind of push out marketing around and around um, are, how prepared are you for, you know, the first quarter of the year, maybe not quarter four, but quarter one in terms of planning out of your, you know, want new carpet before your, your family comes and visits or do you need your house in painted or do you are you been putting off that repairing your you know updating your bathroom till it's time before you know the holidays so some of that marketing around kind of forward thinking is really key for the service-based businesses referral again key in quarter four um, maybe um, reaching out and asking for referrals and offering um, a thank you a small thank you token gift and it would be referrals to work during quarter four and then on into quarter uh, one of 2023. Again, um, businesses should expect to have creative financing options and added on uh, services and uh, keeping their workforce safe and clean. And this is a painting business. Is this a plumbing? Oh, this is a plumbing and heating. Um, I always loved 
trying to find good service-based business websites because they just go on and on and on. And this one, you can schedule, you can call, they do hauling, they do, they do heating, cooling, plumbing, drains, commercial offers, priority membership. They just have a lot going on. They have all of their trusted reviews, 681 of them from their Google, and they have it right there on the front page. And of course, we know with service-based businesses, as well as professional, a lot is referral-based. So those reviews build in that trust um, and then chat with us. They have an actual chat bot, so you can chat with them directly. So. And organizations, and of course, I had to showcase our favorite SLO SBDC here. Or is this? The, oh no, this is the downtown. I saved the SBDC for something else. This is the downtown San Luis Obispo, and I uh, was trying to, uh, you know, think about what the organization should be expecting, and uh, the organizations should continue to think that their members will want to know creative, low cost or added value in incentives or initiatives, um, hosting in-person events or coming back. Many of our organizations, whether it's a chamber or a real estate association or a downtown association are going to be hosting those holiday mixers or the holiday events. Uh, meeting uh, are still offered virtually. I'm seeing still a lot of the meetings, committee meetings, or even these type of meetings are still being offered virtually. Not, I think what a lot of organizations have found for those that have a board of directors or have task groups or committees is that Meeting virtually is fine and it's probably more productive because we don't need to have everybody schedule and make it all, you know, meet from the home. And although the interaction is different, I think um, it's not usually as robust. You don't really know if everybody is like present. <laughs> um, they might just have their video on, but they're not really there. They're might be multitasking. So maybe the quality of interaction is different. But we are not, quarter uh, 2022, we'll probably continue to see some meetings from organizations continue virtually. Budgets are recovering, but I think for the last quarter, um, organizations that depend upon an event or some kind of donor membership drive, it's going to be key for them to, to help recover from uh, their, the, the pandemic. Um, where a lot of them, their fundraising strategies really depended on events or um, it, they just weren't there. So their, their budgets are impacted. Again, increased demand for digital marketing, including their website, email marketing. Most of the organizations I know are running with skeleton staffing and or pulling in volunteers more. Um, and then also they're looking at collaborating and partnership and it's not so much an option anymore, but it's required. How can they leverage resources with another organization? So anyway, that's kind of what my take is on what businesses might, might um, expect in quarter 2022. So what will customers expect? What are we thinking they're going to, expect in quarter 2022. Probably nothing more different than businesses, but they're going to want clean, safe, and healthy health protocols in place. They're going to want online shopping options. They're going to want up-to-date information about your business. So if you have um, your business footprint out in different places, whether it's Google My Business or on a listing on a uh, different web, like a Chambers website where they, if you're a member, they'll put your listing on the directory or your, your um, social media icons are listed on your website. It's kind of making sure that all the information's current and all the links work. Um, they're gonna want, customers are gonna want, want or probably gonna be expecting a fully functioning website. 
immediate response to their questions. They're going to be looking for promotions, discounts, deals, um, primarily in the retail and uh, food and beverage um, sectors. They're going to want flexible policies with gift card options and maybe even tagging into their loyalty program, their products delivered on time and as promised. For locals, they're gonna want personalization, unique products and stellar customer service. And then if your market is uh, visitors, they're gonna wanna feel welcome. They're gonna want shipping options, special services, and again, stellar service. So this I love, this just popped into my email this morning. So I changed my one slide real quick. And this is uh, Picking Daisies. And she actually, in the middle of her email, Mark, um, her email promotion, she's uh, promoting her, her holiday fabric is online now. So you can start making your list. So she's already planning. And then if you look below there, she's got her kits are ready to go and Kind of planting that seed that if you're going to be making any holiday gifts out of fabric or these kits you better get going now and the sale starts wednesday so i really like that all right so enough of what everybody would be expecting whether it's the business or the customer do you have anything you wanted to add not yet Okay, I didn't know maybe in your industry there, you had something that I didn't cover or. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so as we move through this, maybe this will kind of spark. Yeah, okay, good. So the first thing, strategies, the first I um, on the checklist is, uh, well, not on your checklist, but on my PowerPoint here, is to really start to uh, look at your calendar for this next quarter and mark it with what are some of the key events or activities um, that are happening. In quarter four, typically there are those national type of big events, Halloween or fall, um, Black Friday for retail, Small Business Saturday, then there's Cyber Monday. So Giving Tuesday is a nonprofit. Um, of course, the, you know, the holidays and then New Year's Eve. So those are the national. Now, there may be some national ones that are specific to your industry that I can put in there. But those are kind of like the ones that retailers really kind of gravitate towards. But then look at your sector uh, specific. Um, if you're part of a... Uh, if you are under, are you the broker or are you under, you work for a company? Yeah. Um, I work under brokerage, but I have my own business. Okay. So if your brokerage company does, an, does a, something in the last quarter for recognition, I know sometimes they do recognitions, then that would be where you'd want to maybe think about putting that on your calendar so you can maybe build up to it and then build down from it in terms of just information out to your client base or your potential customer base that it's coming and that our brokerage company is being recognized for this because it gives you then credibility as an independent agent because that's the brokerage company you work under. That's one example that it might work. So your industry or, or sector specific, any regional events. When I talk regional, I'm like thinking, um, you know, your your trade area. If you just work in San Luis Obispo, that's great. But if you're um, like work touch up into another county, um, if you kind of bleed out into other counties and you've got client base out there, or that's where your customers come from, then what's happening regional? Sometimes counties will have a regional event versus just the city of. Um, and then local opportunities, those would be your chambers, your downtown association, your real estate association. Um, sometimes they have um, like a, a holiday mixer that they just invite agents from all over. So do you, do they have a real estate? Do you have a real estate? Yeah, 
Yeah, um, so I did also design Mm. You do some um, stage setting of the houses and No, I, I well, I have to understand how we can I got it. So, yeah, so basically, you know, injuries are on top. Yeah. Um, like that. So like, like, yeah. 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 Like concentrate your resources and your energy. Yeah. Um, so she's just explaining um, for those online, just explaining the type of business that she is in and her specific focus in the real estate industry. Uh, and then, you know, very, very often in the fourth quarter, it's a perfect opportunity to have and schedule and plan your own signature event. Um, this works really well for um, most sectors, um, especially uh, retail, food and beverage, uh, tourism, the visitor uh, tourism sector. And so it might even be just an open house. Maybe you're tagging on. Uh, to where you're located, um, maybe you are a business that is on the the art the local art walk, and you're just going to be open and, and invite all your own customers to come and join you for that evening and be and hosting a, a, a customer appreciation night. Uh, so those are often things. So when your first step is to kind of look at your calendar. Get, you know, so September, October, November, December is laid out there right in front of you. And then you can mark whatever is key in those different months that might have value to your business marketing um, strategy, because then you can plan content, you can plan ahead of it, you can plan behind it, how you're going to follow up, where, where are some gaps, is there something more creative you want to do? Um, so that's like the first step in my mind. It's, and I'm kind of a visual person. So putting it out on the calendar is really easy for me. And then if you keep that or even a whiteboard and take a screenshot of it after you lay it out, then you have that as a record for next year. So that brings me to this slide. We never really, you know, most businesses, you may have been in business for a while, and even if you're just a startup, it, it's okay. You want to kind of think about what you implemented in quarter uh, four of 2021. What worked well? What, did, what didn't work well? Should I toss something out? Did I do nothing? And so if you have it on a calendar, then you can um, kind of go through that and look at the different promotions, collaborations. Uh, uh, deals, the type of marketing you did, and what were the outcomes. If you have it written down somewhere, then after the promotion or the um, marketing strategy, then you can kind of say, okay, this certain social media ad that I placed really got good traction. I reached 10,000 folks. It drove this many people to my event, or I had this many click-throughs on my website. And you can record that, and then you can look at that again the following year and say, wow, that was really powerful. Maybe I should do that again. So again, you know, kind of, we don't always think about measuring the impact of our marketing in a formal strategy. We do with our, how much we spend, how much we generate in sales, how much our expenses are, but we don't ever really take time to break it out within like a quarter and look at what we physically did and did it have any impact and what was that impact and if you come and visit with sbdc advisors like myself or like someone here from this great center we're going to ask you what was the impact what did you do last year because we don't want to start just from you know uh, a blank slate because we know you've implemented past things then you want to lay out your quarter four roadmap or plan and um, I look at that, like if you look at the calendar, you know, you want to draft your plan quarter by quarter. And then I'm just going to flip it to this slide because I think this will help explain it a lot better. So across the top, does this have a laser on it? 
Oh yeah, yeah, there we go. So across the top are the, uh, here's quarter 2022, and then I put the months. And then down this margin, I kind of put some areas that we would want to think about. So we have, um, you know, what's your monthly theme or content idea going to be? Because you start there and then you, um, skip, you think about, are there any special events I could do around that theme? Like for October, we put fall, harvest, Halloween. I just made these all up. So it could be whatever is relevant to your sector or your industry. And then we have special events, marketing, which is a big bucket. This business that I am pretending I'm doing has a storefront or an office, whatever you want to call it, referral marketing, and then I put testimonials and reviews to re kind of set a goal to obtain some of those things. So the first uh, special event is it's uh, Breast Awareness Month in October, and it's Halloween Giveaway Promotion. Those are two big events that I'm thinking about planning something around. And then here's my goal for October, email marketing campaign for special offers, go live with great content and boost a video, uh, put, on a, uh, put out a great blog, post high quality organic social content, promote my online shop, update my website and calendar listing. So I'm going to do all that for October around maybe these things. And then here is my storefront. I'm going to participate in the local window display. I'm going to offer an organization to promote um, and come and build around breast awareness window. And then I'm going to host a pop-up vendor. And then internally, I'm going to uh, start a refer a friend challenge. And then down here, I'm going to collect five video testimonials and five new reviews. So I'm not going into such detail of how I'm going to do it, you know, when I'm going to do it. I believe you should do that, but for today, I'm not going to say that's what we're going to do because that's the who, the what, the where, the when, and how much, right? So these are just like ideas that I'm generating. And um, you want to kind of think about how you're going to align everything and those themes help align those, those type of activities or marketing tactics that you're going to do. This also works, you know, you can just have one or two things up there. You don't need a full on. I'm just went over the top just to give examples. You can do this with your marketing team. You can do this with just the person that helps you with social media. Um, sometimes I do this with my family, my, my daughters. I have two daughters. Who, the one is 26, one is 43, and they both see things differently. So I'll plan out my strategy with them. And then for November, whoops, sorry, wrong thing. Oh gosh, that's the thing with the little laser. Um, there we go. There is like, these are the, you know, obviously this is Thanksgiving and the national. Here's a turkey top, here's Black Friday, here's Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday. And I've seen a lot of different sectors participate in these um, American Express small, uh, Shop Small Business Saturday. Um, some businesses pull in like brand new in entrepreneurs or, or businesses that don't have a storefront yet and let them pop up into their place of business and invite all their um, customers in and they're just providing the space for that pop-up um, and then so we just go down that list again and then up here in the winter months just kind of lay it out so that is kind of how I would call a roadmap um, it helps you just kind of sit down this probably doesn't take that long to do maybe an hour to look at your quarter and brainstorm some of these things um, of course, the goal is to look at it again before, you know, July of 23, but <laughs> it helps kind of say, okay, this is what I was going to do for these different areas. And I guess I better look at my calendar because if I'm going to do an email, if I'm going to do any email marketing 
or I'm going to have paid advertising around Small Business Saturday, and that's always the Saturday before Thanksgiving, then I better plan to get it out in the first of November and put that on my calendar. So this helps you kind of look at the actual activity, and then you can think how much prep is there, and what can I do with follow-up. I'm overwhelmed just looking at my roadmap. <laughs> okay. Now, the next uh, item that I wanted to talk about was really focused on online sales. It's my notes here. And uh, really getting ready for online sales. Thinking about um, how prepared are you? This is from uh, Junk Girls. And this is one of her collections of her hand stamped brass. Had the opportunity to walk by that store yesterday and peek in. Um, this is one little tiny piece of their business. And they obviously this is a, uh, a big part of, you know, the small little gift items that they are selling. And I kind of clicked down on the Christmas 2022 and then the San Luis Obispo special little key rings or hand stamped um, brass items. But you want to think about um, if you haven't already, and it's relevant to your sector, adding the online store or a shoppable landing page. And I talked about this earlier in the uh, workshop, in the retail workshop, that you got to have it. Um, you, you, you really need to try to make this your goal for uh, 2022, at least quarter four of your retail to get that online store or at least a shoppable landing page. Uh, worst case scenario, make sure your Etsy shop is up or you're maybe even considering to put a few items on your Facebook page to shop. You need to uh, think about um, stocking your inventory and determining your op offers as you think through your uh, website. Where, you know, what are you putting up do you have to concentrate between now and let's say October, really getting your online store uh, inventory looking as good or have a lot of different products on it as you're in store. For food and beverage businesses, you know, I was just down at Seeds and they have a full on little tiny retail area. Um, a lot of food and beverage have uh, merchandise hats and shirts. So do you have that online? Um, most of the restaurants that now that I kind of look at and search that have, you know, full on uh, websites, they have a place where they you can shop and actually purchase it. And a lot of times when we go to a restaurant and we're visiting from out of town or our family takes us, we don't have a real connection with that restaurant. But then after we eat, and have a great time, service is great. We really have kind of a relationship. So maybe we want to get the hat or the t-shirt that's real fun. Um, so anyways, uh, optimize your descriptions and make sure you have quality uh, photos. Um, and that be just for a website in general. Uh, if you have a website, you wanna make sure that it's current and you've got really, you know, maybe an embedded video of you welcoming folks and explaining a little bit about what you do for this um, brokerage company or for your business, what your services are. Um, you want to, if you're selling products, identify your shipping and your pickup options. Um, connect your shop to all of your marketing uh, touch points. So your website is, is should be your hub everything goes to it and everything comes out of it. So you wanna make sure that you've got all of your social media icons on there. And if you have an e-commerce, if you're promoting it on any of the social media platforms, that it comes to that website and vice versa. Um, one thing that I, I think really is impactful, especially uh, a strategy for quarter four is creating a, a memorable packaging an unboxing experience. Um, it, you know, we're not Amazon. We're, we're thinking independent businesses, maybe smaller little venues. So put some thought into how that presentation and, and give that customer like 
uh, wow, uh, wow, I didn't expect that. And I think businesses on Etsy shop do a really great job of that. Also slip in a discount or a piggyback um, coupon, like maybe a, a card to come back and shop in your business in six months, you know, a discount or a referral, give this to a friend, a family member and let them come in and, and you know, enjoy a promotion or a deal or a discount. Keep your policies really clear, leverage all paid advertising opportunities. So if you are in the sector that quarter four is key to you, retail, food and um, beverage, then think about really investing in some social media advertising. I would say if you're a, a professional business and you're really looking at when is your key, you know, your key uh, quarter, which could be every quarter, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, hopefully, right? That's our name of our game, right? But maybe you want to, um, you do that really great video and you're introducing and maybe you want to push that out as a video through your uh, social media platform and you might want to then pay to boost it or pay to advertise it and have it go into some new areas that or new populations or demographics that you haven't targeted yet to kind of grow awareness and then maybe you link it to hosting a, a free event through Eventbrite in November about talking about preparing for, um, if you're thinking about uh, moving or you're thinking about investing in property, you're gonna hold that free little 30 minute event. So there's a little incentive there. So it's kind of laid out that way. You're, you're growing customers by using the social media advertising, but the hook is also a, a short free 30 minute event webinar that you put on talking about your services and the value it adds to those people that attend. Um, so that's kind of how you build your, your roadmap. That's how you would build a roadmap and think about all those little touch points. <clears throat> and then always um, uh, develop a robust customer service plan. And one thing that I that I have here in my notes, and you guys will get my notes when I, you get the PDF, is that in selling high value items, it says recommendation is not to put your logos, pictures, or descriptions of your business on the package's contents on the outside because of all the issues we have with porch pirates. And um, that was something that I just thought, oh, I'll throw this in just as a you know, maybe a wake up because I never really thought about it. I've always thought just Amazon on the front of the box said, you know, come take me. But um, then uh, it, and then it can also cause shipping insurers to reject any claim of damage or lost merchandise. So I didn't know what really that means, but I thought I'd just tell you that's in my notes. Okay. Ooh. How are we doing? Do we have any questions on? Okay, don't be shy, folks. So here is, um, this goes a little deeper into your roadmap. And this is about leveraging all the channels that count. This is about leveraging all of your social media channels, your advertising channels, your review channels, your website. Um, so update your listings and review all of the sites that you have maybe added your business to because the link may be broken or they're outdated or you you know a lot of us have uh, gotten different uh, email addresses or we've gotten a different website URL. Um, maybe sometimes when a third party updates their website, like. A chamber would update their website. Not all the links come in smoothly and they, you know, are broken. Um, so even especially for organizations, if you're hosting a lot of different uh, listings and you're trying to give your members a little up, go in and check and make sure that the links work. And for businesses, 
make sure your links are working properly because you're losing out if you're uh, somebody links on there and it goes into says the you know it's a big broken link or this site is not available it immediately tells the consumer oh you're not open yes Quick question what is what do you think is the frequency you should post i mean is there such a thing as like too many posts i don't want people to start on calling <laughs> I would say if you have good content and it's not always about hire me, hire me, I recommend three times a week. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like rotating between Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, where it's okay if it's just one platform. Yeah, you could do it that way in the beginning, but um, I think you should probably have enough content to try to uh, post. As, you know, YouTube is more for your videos, right? Well, I don't have any Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I thought you did. I'm like, oh, I want to see your YouTube. Yeah. yeah. So YouTube channels are more about um, really being a library of, of videos that you, exactly. yeah. So YouTube may not be appropriate. Let's say LinkedIn for you and maybe Facebook. Yeah. You, if you start making videos and showing different properties that you have available or people or other agents have available. Um, yeah, you could put them over there and then take that little link and embed it into your social media. So I would I would strive if you and I recommend this, um, if you could write a blog a week and then extract information from that and repackage it for your social media platforms, that's a great goal to achieve. Okay, and so as far as blog writing, that in itself seems like a very daunting task. Like something else would be like 20 hours. <laughs> um, do you have any like suggestions on that? Um, I don't. Do you ever offer blogging webinars here? Okay. Um, I would just start out and maybe write a, a blog about introducing yourself and your services and and not worry so much about uh, the per being perfect with it, but getting you know, the information out and start there and see. Blogs have a longevity on your website. They sit there. Then you can real and when people come to your website, then they can link on your past blogs. If you can't, if you're not really comfortable with doing the blogs yet, then just pick a, um, like a Tuesday and a Thursday and think about what content you could post on each of those days in a bucket. Like maybe Tuesdays, I'll talk about um, some services or I'll talk about some properties that are available. And this is just a post. Yep, okay. just a post. So that's yeah. Hey, how this problem Yes. Here's a picture relevant yes and you just post it you could also uh, maybe do like a series let's say in october you say okay i want to do um, a series of the most common questions asked for me and that would then give you and that could be a blog that could be a whole blog at the end of your post like okay i'm going to take all these questions and answers that i did and now i'm going to write the blog but the beauty of the blog would be it's permanent yeah, the posts are there too, but they go down the feed. Yeah, you can pin a post to the top of certain social media platforms, yeah. but then they are dated, and it makes it look like you haven't posted anything. So okay. yeah, so there's values in both, and when you have a blog on your website, um, it also increases your search engine optimization. Yeah. So then. Okay. Yeah. So maybe make a post into a blog to start. Yeah, try that way. I think that would work. And um, then you could try maybe a month of post and look at it and say, okay, there's something common here then I can write the post about. Okay. Oh, well, thank you. Great. Great question. Thank you. Um, update your website. Uh, the Your website is your own real estate. You own that. It's not... Um, you know, Facebook or Mega Suite or Mega can't take you down, uh, can't block you. Um, you own that real estate, so make sure that it is current and that it's got it's working for you. You have calls for action on it. Um, your all of your social media icons are on there. Um, and then I also have here if you're going to be doing 
take getting emails, um, maybe if it's appropriate, create a holiday opt-in form. You should have at least an opt-in form on your website. Um, that is where you can capture those emails. And then social media, lay out your schedule, fill out your calendar, leverage all of the relevant features. Now, Facebook pages are going through a transition. So I don't know if you have the classic pages or you have the new experience pages. You want to watch for that. Yeah, I know. Just when we got it down, they go changing. The new experience looks more like a profile page, but it is for a, uh, a business or a organization. And it's much easier to change um, around and post. So just make sure whatever page you're using, it is fully, all of the features are fully current and filled out. So that would be like, you know, the deep description of your business and your hours and just go through that about and make sure everything is filled out appropriately. And then maximize your email marketing campaigns. Do you use an email, email marketing? Okay. Do I, okay. <laughs> Start getting those emails. And again, uh, one of the recommendations here is to think about maybe a branded holiday template just for the different holidays. One thing I do um, for, I manage like maybe besides my own uh, social media Facebook page, I manage about seven different organizations Facebook pages for them. That's what they like, they work well, and then somebody else does the Instagram. But like for a major holiday, I'll go in and schedule and I'll just get like a, you know, 4th of July, I'll make it on Canva and just say happy 4th of July. And that's my 4th of July post, right? Or my Thanksgiving, we give thanks, thank you for supporting. And the same with the holidays, you know, enjoy your time with your families, happy holidays. So those kind of generic posts are okay every once in a while around a certain type of event or, or season. So you can also put those in there too to fill up some good, you know, keep things coming in your followers feed. Hey, so yeah, this is um, like, this is, I got this from, um, I think I got this from, might've been a, Pinterest post. I don't remember where I got this from, but I really like this. Of course, this is a days of the week. So we're going down into a much more, uh, instead of just the month, now we're going down to uh, these, all these different, you know, create three boards with gift ideas. So these are their, these are holiday events affecting the business, promotional communication, social media, deadline. So they've kind of color coded it. And um, if you have, you know, a team that can help with this, this is really very helpful because you could go that day and go, okay, what am I supposed to, what did I write down last month that I'm supposed to do this month for my Facebook or my YouTube or my Instagram? And then these are blocked out holidays, right? So this is really retail um, oriented and maybe yours is not, you know, you don't need all of those. So maybe you do an email a month. And so you're going to start this up here, start to, you know, going to start to add uh, opt in to my website to get my emails. And then down here, you're going to send out your December email to for next month. So it gives you this whole month to come up with an idea of what you want to send out and get. And get. So yours, you know, you, for each business, it could be very different. Okay. So we're down to my two favorite subjects, as I mentioned earlier this morning, paid advertising. Um, if you're going to be doing any big activities or you're going to be hosting an event, or you're going to be receiving an award, think about um, creating a press release 
listing all the activities for PR, public uh, publicity. These are really more for like an organization or a bis larger business that may be doing a press release. In the smaller markets, the smaller rural markets, the newspapers will have um, like uh, if you set out a listing of um, your events you're going to do, they may have a place where you can list your event into the local publication or into a local uh, magazine. Um, ask advertising rep for their demographic statistics. So if you're ever going to invest in any paid advertising, whether it's print, radio, publication, ask them for the breakdown of their readership, what's the readership's age, um, what are their interests, to make sure it's in line with your, your um, demographics and your customers. Because we can't, in traditional advertising, they can tell us how many radio spots we got or how many, you know, we can see the printed ad, but unlike social media, we don't know if how many of those were read. Like in an email marketing on the back end, if you use a certain type of program, you can see what the open rate is, how many people read it, how many people click through. Those are really key key stats. And so leveraging social media advertising is typically more cost effective. You can kind of target your market more. You can target where you want it to go. And so a lot of people are dabbling more and more into social media advertising. And then I said, look for cooperative opportunities, uh, free listings, Cooperative opportunities are sometimes if you're in a specific downtown area and they buy the page, then you can get a discount. Or in a magazine, if you know your broker's buying the whole page and then you could have a, a, a small piece of that. Again, events and promotions. Determine if you're participating as a vendor or a sponsor. There's, those are two different ways to participate. Um, if you're participating and your store is in actually going to be in the event or storefront, or you're going to have a pop-up, or you're going in at, as a vendor, create an offer or promotion for all of the, all of the events you're going to participate in. And it can be different for each event, so then you can track the return on that, your return of investment, or ROI, as we call it. Um, consider hosting some pop-up vendors yourself, cross-promote all events that are happening in your territory. It's just really good. Uh, keeping the business local is great. So if there's other events that are happening, you may want to mention those in your social media campaign that as a community person that lives here, I enjoy posting about upcoming events and this one will be held in the park. Hope to see you there, um, or whatever it is. And then um, you might even have an event yourself and go live, like today. <laughs> go live. Don't let the camera scare you. Okay, we're uh, oh, good. We're doing well. So here's just a final little thing about some tips for delighting your customers. Um, this is the cookie, the cowboycookie.com um, cookie. I just think this is really great. They, it's a drop down of how you can get your cookies to you. And getting cookies couldn't be easier. They have local uh, SLO county delivery, nationwide shipping, pick up, order now. There's the drop down. There's your order and pick up. So no excuses why you can't get cookies delivered. It's just, uh, and these make great gifts too. Um, you know, we think of food items uh, and local food items being delivered. Like I'm thinking for my mom, I might do that because, you know, it's just a nice gift. Great, a great way to say we love you or happy holidays or whatever. Okay, so thinking about profitability for quarter four, uh, prepare for the holiday rush. Now, 
that may be for some sectors, if you're in an area where there's heavy foot traffic or you're food and beverage, and you know there's going to be a lot of different events happening or you're really promoting, be prepared for it. Um, uh, have your staff uh, trained. Um, let them know about the events that are happening, what to expect. Sometimes in quarter four, we'll have more team meetings than we do in other quarters because there's so much going on. Nothing's worse than your uh, frontline employee doesn't know that you just put out an email with a special discount and somebody comes in to shop and doesn't get it. And then they call back later because they're upset. Pay attention to your social media channels. Uh, respond to them. Make sure that um, if people are responding to them, you comment back. Um, offer a compelling discount. Get personal. Listen to your customers. Ask the customer direct questions about their preferences. Um, send follow-up messages to customers after each interaction to thank them. Now, if you've got a lot of customers coming through, that's a lot of work. So maybe you do a group thank you. But if you are... Um, if you see customers coming in and they've been longtime customers, uh, just send them a little message. Um, be transparent about small print, and that's really about your refund and your exchange policies. I always um, stay customer obsessed. I always empower customers, your frontline agents to make decisions. Um, try to reduce the on-hold times and transfers. Get back to people in a, a timely manner. These days, it seems like just getting a live body on the other end of the phone is a plus. <laughs> and then, um, in, you know, think about rewarding your employees, hosting a holiday lunch party, maybe um, if, if the resources are there, giving bonuses, um, offer an extra day off after the holiday season is over, declare customer service champion for the month. And the final is really about our little checklist that I gave out. Um, it's a conduct a quarter four preparedness checklist. So think about how prepared are you for quarter four? Do I have my photos and my videos ready? Are they are they prepared? Do or I need to you know start thinking about building my video and library and photo library? Is my online shop stop? and optimized? Is my email list up to date and is it segmented? Um, have I started one? If not, I'm going to start one and make that my quarter four goal and then quarter one, I'll send out my first email. Uh, identify your quarter four promotional offers. Uh, think about a branded holiday marketing template. Make sure all my links and information is current across all of my marketing touch points, um, inventory is ordered in stock and or on its way. My, train, my staff is trained and ready to handle the demand and all delivery systems and pay, payment systems are in place and ready to go. <laughs> so that's kind of just the checklist. And this is broken down into some six different categories. So you can just kind of take that and check off what's ready and what isn't and make some notes on that. And that's it. I think I finished a little early.